Hello, welcome back, Cloud Scholars. I'm your host, Kieran Truss. Uh, for all those of you who are new to this uh, channel, I want to welcome you with open arms. Uh, here at Cloud Scholars, um, I'm always constantly trying to show you some new ways of navigating through the Azure portal. And in this video, it's going to be a how-to video of creating a budget. Now, when it comes to budgets, budgets are a tool in Azure to limit costs within your portal. You can apply thresholds to your budget to make sure you don't hit that specific budget. Budgets also allow you to set up automation so you can shut down resources once you hit that threshold. Within Azure, it's very easy to have a resource running and forget about it. You may set up a storage account or you may have a VM, which is one of the most easiest ways, and you're doing some testing. And once you are able to accomplish it, you go to send an email. And then once you send the email, you're like, okay, I'm gonna go grab some lunch. And then it turns into that resource running the whole day and you come into work the next day and you're like, holy crap, I totally forgot to turn that thing off. So what I want to do is show you uh, Azure budgets because it helps you to as a reminder to say, hey, you know, this thing is still running or you are running into your budget for your whole subscription. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to go down to cost analysis. And I want to show you exactly what's going on within my environment. So within my environment, you can see there's a couple of options that we have up here. We have save, save as, you can share some of this information, you can download it, and if you wanna send it as an email, you have all these different options up here that you can kind of go through. Down here, you see it says actual cost, right? So let me just not jump around. So this is scope. So if you have more than one scope or more than one subscription, you could go into that. And you can see accumulated costs. You can say daily costs if you wanted to change it up and say, okay, let me see what the daily cost is. And you can see where our daily cost really went up. So it's saying budget monthly, it's like a dollar a day, um, you know, because the budget is supposed to be $30. And you can see right here, I spent $4.93 on November 9th. $4.89, and you can see this is where um, it really just jumped up. And to be honest with you, I know exactly why, because I had a VM running, and I was trying to do some testing. So I left the VM running overnight, and that's why the cost kept going up. Then you could also do a, a couple different things. So let's go to, uh, let's go back to accumulated costs, kind of want to leave it on that screen. And then you could also filter it out. So you could say this month, last seven days, this quarter, there's a bunch of different things. Then you can add some filters as well if you want to add your filters. So let's come down here and let's take a look. You have these three uh, uh, little sub menus here and you can see exactly how much things are costing you. So if I go service name, um, right here it says virtual machine. So the virtual machine is costing me $17.49. It's costing me the most and that's pretty much where this actual cost is eating up most of the actual cost. If I go down to storage, that's another $6.64. And then virtual network is $0.27. Cents, and then the Azure monitor is $0.05. Cents. But I can change this up. If I don't want to do service name, I'm like, well, virtual machine is great, but which virtual machine? I can come up here and I could go and click resource. So when the resource is giving me exactly the information, so it's saying DC Cloud Scholars is costing me $17.22. This is the domain controller. So the domain controllers are always going to cost a little bit more because they're supposed to be running all the time. Now this is a lab, so I don't need to run all the time, but I was doing some testing. So $17.22. Then we have DC Scholars Disk. This is the disk associated with that virtual machine. And then we have this VM01, which is just another virtual machine that I was running for testing, and so on and so forth. So you have location as well, it lets you know the location that's costing you the most money, and then you have your subscription, but there's a bunch of different things you can do here. So let's just say if I wanted to change it from location, and I say, let's give me the resource group name. Which resource group is costing me the most money? And I can see RG East US is costing the most money, and that is exactly where this same DC Scholars is. Now, let's see if I had, you know, if you wanted to kind of go to resources, but if it's safe, you have your environment tags, so I don't have tags, but let's see what populates here. 
probably won't populate with anything because I'm not tagging any of the resources. But tags are really great if you need to now see. Yeah, so I jumped back to subscription because it wasn't able to pull up any information. So is there anything else that we can kind of go about? So we had location. We can, uh, which one do we want to choose? Service name, service family. Let's see what populates there. Yeah, so service family, you'll see compute is costing the most money than storage and networking. So it makes absolute sense because over here, it's kind of give, it gives us the same thing, right? Where it gives us, you know, more of that kind of information. So what we need to do now is I'm going to go into cost alerts. Now, once in cost alerts, one thing I want to show you is this is one of the cost alerts for what I have for my budget. And it says if the actual cost is greater than 75 percent. And then there's another one, which is if the forecasted cost is greater than 80 percent. So I'll show you exactly where that gets set up at. Um, and it's supposed to trigger and shoot off an email. So let me show you how the email looks when you get it from the Azure um, portal. So as you can see, it says you have an alert for budget monthly costs. And I'll go to that a little bit later in the video to show you the monthly cost. And it says your total spend for budget monthly costs is now $23.14, exceeding your specified threshold value of $22.50. So it says actual value is $23.14. Notification threshold is supposed to be at $22.50. And the budget value is $30. So now we are back at the portal. Let's go to our budgets. And let's see. So there it is, that monthly cost. And you see it says budget is $30 and then the actual is $24.23. So what I'm going to do is we're going to come up here to click to add. And within this section, we're going to give our, our uh, budget a name. But one thing I want to show you is you see the scope. It's letting you know exactly what scope it is. If you have more than one subscription, you'll be able to drop down on it. And you can add a filter. So you can say bill and profile, charge type. You can do uh, by resource. So reservation name. Uh, there's a bunch of this resource group. So we wanted to do a budget for a resource group. We could do that. And we can do a whole bunch of different things. So let's go budget by resource group. And the reason why we're doing it is because that RG East resource group cost us the most money. So now let's go ahead and create a budget by the resource group. And now it's going to say, okay, which one? So I'm going to say RG East US. We're going to do a budget for that specific one. And it says, say, view of monthly cost data. So it says last month, I spent like $14. The max for the past three months is $24. And the max monthly cost is $63. So I want to show you something else. So let's just say if I took this out and I took away that resource. If you look down here, it's saying suggested budget is $125 based on their forecast. So, you know, it, it gives you that specific forecast. What I'm going to do is I'm going to still go back to that resource, resource name, resource group name, excuse me. And I'm going to do RG East US. And I actually could have done it by the resource name too, if you wanted to, because we know the domain control is costing us the most money. But that's fine. I'm going to leave it as that. And there it is. It actually had it there before. So apologies. Suggested budget. So it's letting me know $63 based on the forecast. So what I'm going to say is, all right, you know what? I'm going to call this um, RG East, East US budget. It doesn't like that. So let's just take this out. RG East US budget East budget. Cool. All right. So we have our East budget. So we know it's our far east region. And we could do a bunch of different things. We could say reset period is every month. We could do it every quarter. We could do it annually. So we'll leave it to month, which is fine. And the creation date we'll leave it as the twenty second of uh twenty twenty two of November. And then we can do expiration time. We'll leave it as this. You can change it if you want. If you want to extend it out a little bit further, you can. But we'll do the 2024 and we'll do it to October, which is perfectly fine. So what are we going to do for our budget? So we're like, all right, you know, we spent a little too much money last time. We're going to do $40. I know what a suggestion, but we're going to say $40. 
and we're going to click next. And then this is where those alert conditions are. So it's like, okay, based on these conditions, when are we sending these alerts? So we can do actual or forecasted. So the actual would be the actual amount. So if our budget is $40 and it says, okay, by $20, once it hits $20, send this alert. Or you could do forecasted where it gives you, hey, you know, for the last couple of days, you've been spending about $3 a day. So, you know, if the forecast is expecting it to be over 75% by, I don't know, the 10th of the month, then it's going to send out the alert then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to say when we hit $18 and you'll see, see how this moves. So it says $18 threshold. So even if I said 25, let's say if I put 25 and now it says 25% threshold, right? So percentage of the budget. So that's what it's doing. So sorry, not 18. So it's actual it's percentage of the threshold. So this is $25. This is $10. So let's just say if I change this and I said, hmm, and now this is $20. So it says actual, right? So it's letting you know, then it's going to say, okay, now send an email alert. So I'm going to say cloud, cloud scholars learning at gmail.com and that's who's going to receive the email and then when it comes to language preference you can change it to whatever language you want default is fine for us and then we click create and there you have it now i have two budgets um here and it says a monthly cost for the whole subscription and then i have another budget which is for east region which is the east budget and you can see where it says there's nothing here for forecasted for it right now because obviously it was just created. But you can see it gives you the, the reset period. It resets every month, the creation date. Um, it's going to say for the 11th, it just does that. Um, expiration date, it just set, also has it for 10-31-2024. And then the budget is $40. So there you have it. That's how you go about creating a budget. Uh, I like to keep these how-to videos short and sweet. So one thing I want to say is if you found the content in this video to be valuable, please, if you have not done so already, please hit that like and subscribe button. I have tons and tons of more videos uh, constantly trying to provide some education and give back to the community. So as always, here at Cloud Scholars, uh, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and from consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.